This is Joseph Coco. I'm at A2 CAF on behalf on behalf of Becky Hilburn's Art Process Blog. Keep on trucking, Nata Soup. If you could introduce yourself, Neil. Sure. Uh, my name's Neil Brido. I uh, draw all ages mini comics, and I also run Radiator Comics, which is a distributor of self-published comics, and I'm also an exhibitor services coordinator for the Chicago Alternative Comics Expo, also known as Cake. Fantastic. Okay, so are you actually local to a 2 Uh No, so I live in Chicago. Um, yeah. This is uh, my first time in Ann Arbor and at this festival. Okay. And what um, what got your attention specifically uh, for the show? Like, um, do you do you know some of the organizers, Jersey or Ann, or you just no. heard good things about it? So I um, have, for the past couple of years, yeah. after uh, <laughs> the festival happens, I've been seeing uh, things online about how awesome it was, and all of my comics are um, all ages and kid-friendly comics, sure. and so uh, it seems like a really great fit for the stuff that I make. So I really wanted to exhibit here. You know? Yeah, and for those of, for, for other people who don't know about A2 Cap, it was previously called um, Kids Read Comics. So it's one of the few um, kid focused or all ages focused, I guess, uh, comic festivals in the United States. Yeah. So they, they changed the name, I guess, because they wanted to attract more teenagers. Yeah. So I've heard that. Rather than like you know, expanding it to adults or anything like that. So it's still very like kid and teen. Focus. Yeah. Right. So it sounds like you're really active in the comics community. Did you get started as an artist or a writer, or did you start just as a fan and slowly work your way in the community and then became a creator? Uh, I mean, I've always loved reading comics. Uh, yeah. And Mike was like, and I moved to Chicago in 2003 and started shopping at Booth's Bookstore and um, sort of started to discover this like self published mini comics and zine culture and yeah. really got hooked on that. So I started self publishing. In 2007, uh, my own stuff. So, um, talking about self publishing, uh, I mean, it's different not only in that it's limited print run, but you're able to do certain things with self published comics that you couldn't do on a massive scale. Like, for instance, um, uh, we were discussing earlier, your books are uh, hand bound. I can't think of what the thread and, and needle uh, binding is called. What's the name of that? I just call it saddle stitched. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's what I've heard before. Um, which is, is just something that builds a little bit more character than staples or, you know, generic non-toxic glue. Yeah, there's nothing <laughs> nothing wrong with, with, uh, with staples, but I personally enjoy both the aesthetic of sewing and then also the actual process of sewing it. It's very relaxing for me. Okay, and you're doing all that yourself, I take it? Yeah, yeah. And then I can also, uh, speaking of, like, bookmaking, uh, I also uh, have one that, has like this pocket with a smaller nice. zine and that's something that that's I, I know that like nowadays you can probably do that through like yeah, a professional I mean, like printer. Some but complicated machine can right. probably do it, yes. but that's going to be a rare sort of thing. Uh, certainly for um, if if you're only coming to a few shows and you don't have a, a distributor pushing your things, it might be hard to dish out the money to get a, a large press to do yeah. that for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Uh, you also talked about uh, what is it the Reese Reesograph? Yeah, Reesograph. Yeah, so um, sorry, I, I used to be more familiar with print techniques. Oh, no. My my fiance was a. Uh, did a lot of traditional printing, but unfortunately she hasn't done it in a little while, so it slipped my mind. Right on. So yeah, Risograph is sort of like if a if a photocopier and a screen printing process like had a baby. Um, so okay. these are uh, this is Risograph. This one is actually an older copy. That's uh, this background is a photocopy. Okay. Um, but and then these are rubber stamps here. Yeah. Um, but then this, which you can actually kind of tell the difference yeah it's like uh, a rich depth of yeah color. So, and that's, I got these. It's just hard to do with like a web press. Right. Yeah. I got those printed um, through a uh, perfectly acceptable press, which is uh, a risograph printer and publisher in Chicago, run by a uh, guy, Matt Davis. And he does amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, so, how did you get started in comics? I know you said you've been a fan for a long time. Um, like, what, what drove you to 
uh, decide I'm going to try to do this. And um, would you are you are you striving for comics to be your career, or is it something you consider um, to be as more of a hobby? I'm. I mean, so I'm. I'm definitely passionate about keeping comics as part of my career. Um, sure. Self publishing, like making a living self publishing, is tough. Yeah. Uh, it's something that I definitely have not been able to achieve. Um, and the amount of time that I have to work on my own comics is limited. So it is definitely far more a, a passion project than than my career. Uh, my full time job is I run Radiator Comics, which is a distro uh, that represents a bunch of other self published comics artists. Okay. And the idea behind that is that um, it's a, a job that keeps me dealing with self published comics uh, that could support me um, and then also provide more of an income to other self publishers. Right. And it's just broadening the channels for people who don't necessarily, um, they can't. So, I, an example of a uh, distributor would be something like um, uh, I'm sorry I can't Diamond Diamond is a distributor Di yeah so Diamond is a distributor but they do general books and comics right right yeah so they they're the primary distributor for like the US larger uh, United States like uh, if you're you're like the platonic idea of a comic book shop like when you walk in those comics are distributed by uh, Diamond they also distribute um, like small presses is like fanographics and top shelf and uh, even there are some micro presses that uh, have banded together with alternative comics uh, to distribute um, comics through Diamond uh, so companies like Hick and Hawk and Retrofit um, and uh, Oily Comics, those sorts of folks work through alternative comics. Um, the level that Radiator is is more uh, akin to um, uh, things like John Porcelino's Spit in the Half um, or uh, uh, or Sparkplug Comics, which um, was both a micro press and a distributor. They just closed up shop, but that was run first by Dylan Williams, and then after he passed away, uh, by Virginia Payne. Who and does amazing both comics. of those they both do amazing comics. Yeah, I was going to say both those are artists and creators right. themselves, right? Yeah. So they they know how to talk to artists. They know how to pitch comics to stores and those sort of things. Right. So is that a big part of your job? Like actually calling up all the comic book stores? Um, do you do you mainly focus on Chicago clients? No. Or? So the goal is to for Radiator is to expand the number of uh, venues that that have comics available to customers. So um, I actually contact a lot of different types of shops like toy stores, stationery stores, um, bicycle shops, uh, places that that I think would attract people that would be open to reading yeah. these sorts of things if they were presented to it instead of like walking into a comic book shop or yeah. a bookstore. And but. I've, I've interviewed people who, like for instance, um, at Space uh, in Columbus, Ohio, I interviewed a record shop owner slash comic yeah. book store. And since then, I've actually seen several other combination record store slash comic book. And yeah. it's not only Golden Age, which is what a lot of people would assume, uh, but there's just independent stuff in record stores. And it's like, there's just a lot of um, collision between the, the two geekdoms, yeah, I guess totally. you would say. No, so. there's always, like, for a long time, there's been this connection between record stores and comic shops. Yeah. So, yeah, that is a great thing to, to keep to sell comics, too. But, okay, um, so you're just contacting, like, a variety of different people, not necessarily Barnes and Noble, but all, yeah. all kinds or, of shops that might be interested in carrying either a small selection or uh, maybe just all of Radiator Comics right. examples. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's great because that means you don't necessarily have to focus on store space yourself. You can uh, reach out to other people and not necessarily be competing with a whole bunch of other titles that have either name recognition or um, can just throw way more money at it than a, a small distributor might yeah. be able to. Yeah. Okay, so do you actually handle any of the um, advertising of your clients or that's entirely on them so other than contacting the, the shops? I do try to, to promote um, the artists that I, I represent, but in, uh, you know, it's a one-person operation. Uh, sure. 
uh, my partner helps out sometimes, but um, so organizing talks and maybe a little bit of social media stuff. Yeah, so um, there have been a, there's been a little bit of, of that of organizing talks. If somebody's coming into Chicago, I have a lot of uh, contacts in like the Chicago region. Sure. But, um, but yeah, it's a lot of like supporting people on social media. If there are events, if uh, folks that I represent are going to be doing either like comics shows or other sorts of events, I, I like to try and promote that either through the website or through uh, my email newsletter, that sort of thing. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. And we're coming up on the end of the first day of A2CAF. Would you have any advice for an artist who's considering tabling here for the first time? Um, if you make kid-friendly comics... Yeah. Uh, you should be here. You should totally come to this. Because awesome. <laughs> the table is free, so as long yeah. as you can get in, you can pay for the travel. Well, and they also do a lot of really amazing things. There's uh, an incentive program that they have for uh, attendees that um, every uh, table gets a code, and you have to go around and like get like, the things. Codes, and yeah. like, each code is worth a certain number of points, and so yeah. then uh, you can redeem them for something, for prizes. Yeah, um, just a good way to engage younger people who might be too shy to approach every table but yeah. if they're trying to collect your codes then right. they're going to come up and you at least have that chance to yeah, talk to you're them. exploring and um, so and then uh, I think a lot of people kind of expect some sort of free thing too. Uh, yeah well it, so. this is housed in a library so right. a lot of people are probably not necessarily here to buy comics um, and just they see something's going on and they walk around. Yeah. So they might buy, they might not buy, but at the very least, I, I can understand wanting to have something to just give for them as yeah. a takeaway. So I'm really happy that I have a, a free mini comic that I made a bunch of copies of. But, uh, it's um, a jam comic that I made with some friends, and then it also explains how to do a jam comic. So it's a like, nice this thing to encourage kids to make their own. Yeah. So I've been giving that out to a lot of folks. But, yeah. I found a lot of yeah. zine culture encourages that as well. Like, there's probably so many zines that's like, how to get a zine started in your yeah, town. Totally. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, going back to radio. Radiator, uh, really quick. Uh, where do you where do you see Radiator uh, growing to? Like, are you making a lot of connections at events like this and reaching out to independent artists? Yeah, yeah. I'm constantly looking for for new folks to, to represent. Okay, so if an artist is watching, sorry about that. It's an announcement. Uh, like I said, we're at the end of the day today, but. Um, if, if an artist is watching this and they're interested in being represented a little more broadly than just yeah. in their small town or being forced to travel, then they should reach out to you and... Totally, yeah. I've got um, submission information on the Radiator Comics website, which is just radiatorcomics.com. Sure. Uh, and... Uh, I'm not the best at getting back to people quickly, but I do check everything out and eventually do get back to people. Right. Um, so just a brief introduction and maybe a link to their webcomic or their, their physical yeah, comic. And there's, yeah, and there's instructions on how to send uh, a physical copy uh, yeah. because a lot of, uh, all, you know, the, the tactile uh, qualities of comics are, are important. Yeah, um, certainly in the indie scene. Yeah. There's so, a lot of, uh, like we were saying, with the saddle stitching and yeah. either screen printing or some other type of um non-web press printing or non-photocopy. Yeah, and then if, if, uh, if unfortunately I'm not able to, to carry people's comics, I donate the comics that they submitted to comics libraries. So, yeah. so there's not, not going some, to like, waste. Yeah. An evil plot to, to get a bunch of free comics. Sure. <laughs> um, and where can we find your work online if we wanted to purchase uh, the plot? Uh, Just for Radiator? Radiator comics. Yeah, com. It's very that, convenient. That makes perfect sense. Discount. Okay, and um, uh, finally, uh, for someone, how long have you been making comics? Um, I've been self-publishing comics since 2007 and started like seriously drawing them 
since 2005. Okay. So for someone in about your scenario where they're they're kind of well established and have a few at least minis, uh -huh. would would you recommend them come out and check out a two cap for themselves? Yeah, like definitely. even if they have to travel here to, to yeah. do the show. I mean, you know, uh, there are actually several people here from out of town um, traveling as far as like the West Coast to the East Coast coming into the heartland of America. But, yeah, um, I'm based in Chicago, so it's like super easy to to get here. Um, but yeah, I think it's a great show. This is a lot of fun. Okay. And um, I guess one final question. If someone was interested, uh, if they're from a small town or something and they want to try to start their own uh, distribution service yeah. similar to yours, uh, do you have any advice for them to get started on that? I mean, um, obviously, having a bunch of comic friends yeah. helps. Uh, but other than that, like, uh, how did how did how did you get started? And would you say that those are the footsteps to follow in? Um, I think so. First, I would say you should totally do it because okay. it's awesome, and uh, we can always use more people distributing comics. There are tons yeah. of comics being made, and the more people working to get them out into the world, the better. Um, and then, really, like. Focus on the comics that, that excite you because those are the comics that you're going to be best at putting in the top yeah. of people's So names. you think you should try to theme yourself as a distributor, basically, like I do, you know, horror stuff? Uh, I mean, or just I, I, anything I that you enjoy. So like, yeah. You know, I'd say that the, the genres and subject matter that Radiator Comics carries are pretty varied. The yeah. thing that, uh, that ties them all together is, is that they're comics that I can really uh, endorse sell yeah. to people. And if you're it. excited about them, the, the shops can can realize that. Right. Yeah. Rather than just saying, hey, maybe you should, maybe you should carry this comic. Right. Yeah. Here's this <laughs> comic that's okay. Like, no, you have to it's certainly no different than any other comic, but I mean, maybe you want it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Neil, it's been great talking to you, and I hope you have a, a great time at A2Cast. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you.